Good morning, everybody. It is so good to have you with us as you are joining us here in the sanctuary. And if you are joining us online, we welcome you as well. For we are gathered together in worship by the Spirit of God today. If you are watching us at home, joining us online, I encourage you to gather with uh, some community elements before, uh, as we get started this morning so you can participate with us together in communion a little bit later on in the service. So would you join me in prayer this morning as we enter into a time of worship? Gracious God, on this third Sunday of Advent, we come together, gathered by your spirit, a spirit of joy that surrounds us, that encompasses us, that draws us together. We pray, Lord, that you will speak to our hearts, even in the midst of our sadness, even in the midst of our uh, struggles, we hear the Spirit speaking to us. We hear the voices of the angels announcing the birth of Christ. Lord, ignite within us that spirit of joy that comes with the birth of Jesus. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening scripture this morning comes... You have to excuse me this morning. Uh, it comes from Isaiah chapter 35 verses 1 to 10 the desert and the parched land will be glad the wilderness it will rejoice and blossom like the crocus it will burst into bloom it will rejoice greatly and shout for joy the glory of Lebanon will be given to it the splendor of Carmel and Sharon they will see the glory of the Lord and the splendor of our God strengthen the feeble hands steady the knees that give way Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong and do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf be unstopped. Then the lame will leap like the deer and the mute will, will tongue, and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool of the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where the jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow, and a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. It will be for those who walk on that way. The unclean will not journey on it. Wicked fools will not go about it. No lion will be there, nor any ravenous beast. They will not be found there, but only the redeemed will walk there. And those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them. And sorrow and sighing will flee away. Let us join now as we sing with joy. Come, thou long expected Jesus.
I'd like to invite Jeremy Blair to come this morning to do our Advent candle lighting. Let us continue this morning singing Come Thou Hope.
prayer this morning, Away in a Manger, a song that reminds us of Jesus' humble birth. Are there other prayer requests to share this morning? Yes, Marcia. Yes, the, the Christmas Spectacular is, is uh, next weekend, Friday night and Saturday, two performances on Saturday, so we pray for the health of the, the choir members, the orchestra, and all those who are participating in that, with everything that's going around. Other prayers to share this morning. Let us go to our Lord in prayer as the body of Christ. Lord God, we thank you for today, for the many blessings that you have given to us. We thank you, Lord, that you have uh, met us here in this place. As you met with the shepherds, as you met with Mary and Joseph, and brought joy to their lives through the birth of Jesus. Lord, you bring joy to us in the midst of, of our circumstances, the troubles, the hardships that we face each day. We find joy in you. Lord, we do lift up, to, up those who are in need of healing. Lord, we do pray for those uh, who are dealing with uh, cancer, COVID and other uh, illnesses that are going around. Lord, for those who are recovering from surgery or facing surgeries, we hold them before you as well, knowing that you are the ultimate healer. You have gifted and blessed uh, people here on earth, but the healing comes from you. Lord, we pray for those who are grieving grieving the loss of loved ones, grieving the loss of uh, dreams and hopes, uh, jobs, families. Lord, we ask for your hand of, of just peace and comfort with them. We pray, Lord, for our leaders, our national leaders, our local and state leaders. The Lord, as we enter a time of transition, 
that you will, you will guide and direct each one of them to lift up the best for all people. We pray, Lord, for the churches here in Dallas and this, this church here at First Christian. We ask, Lord, for your hand of grace, your hand to uh, just guide and direct us. We pray, Lord, for your, your um, spirit to open doors where it needs to be opened and closed, what may need to be closed. And, Lord, we pray that we will continue to be a light to the community in various ways. But especially during this Advent season, may people see in us your spirit, and may they see Jesus in us as well. And we thank you for the blessings that you have given to us, blessings of family and friends, blessings of provisions. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our second scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 2. And we're, this is um, Mary's song, is, is what part of this is. It's um, after Mary receives the announcement from the angels, from the angel, excuse me, and then hurries off to see her, her relative, uh, Elizabeth. We hear these words from Luke uh, chapter 2, beginning verse 39. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord shall come to me? And, sh and soon, as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that, that the Lord would fulfill his promise to her. And Mary said, or Mary sang, my, Lord, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped the servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham, and his descendants forever, just as he has promised our ancestors. And Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. The party's over. The music no longer playing. The candles have burned down. And a few leftover napkins and some trash are scattered on the floor. You've seen the last guest to the door. And clicking the latch after them, you take a deep breath as you turn to face the cleanup. There's no more laughter in the air. And you wonder, is this all there is? Maybe the next one will be the peak. The next elation will be higher. We live from one celebration to the next, but somehow, it's never all we think it's going to be. The birthday party, the graduation party, the engagement party, the bachelor party. The world teaches us that we can't be satisfied until we hit the next milestone, and then the next after that. Nothing is ever enough. Someone once said all people live lives of quiet desperation. But desperation for what? It feels like we're on some kind of cosmic treadmill, reaching out for a dangling carrot that we'll never actually reach. But that feeling is not a mistake. It's not a conspiracy, not a trick. When we discover in ourselves longings that nothing in this world can satisfy, it means we are created for another world. When we feel unnameable desires that pierce our hearts and stir up something in us that we can't describe, it means everything is working exactly as God intended. 
we were made for joy. And not the kind that passes when the parties are deep, abiding joy. That isn't rooted in circumstances or accomplishments, but in the eternal assurance of participating in God's will on earth as it is in heaven. Joy is a surprise. It's always subverting all the expectation. Joy is finding the king of the universe as a baby. This Christmas, through Jesus, we have joy. Oftentimes, we will look at our circumstances, or we'll look around our lives, and we'll wonder where our joy is. We don't feel joy. We don't feel joyous. It's hard for us to rejoice in th different things that are going on. I'm sure all of us have felt that way at one time or another be based upon our circumstances, based upon what's going on around us, in the world, in our families, the things that we see on the news, the things that we see happening in our communities. It's hard to find joy. But I'm going to tell you something this morning. Joy is not a feeling. Happiness is. Happiness and joy are two different things. Happiness is based upon a circumstance, an event, something that's going on in our lives. You saw in the video, you know, a, a party. Sometimes we do live from, from party to party to party, or, or happy event to happy event to happy event. We live on those things because those types of things, those types of relationships bring us happiness. But they never seem to fulfill that deep down longing that we all have. Happiness is very much based upon circumstance, upon what is going on not only around us, but also within us. But joy, joy is something that is very different, almost similar, but very different, because joy is not based upon circumstance. Joy is not based upon what's happening around us. Joy is based, is rooted in our deep and abiding faith and deep and abiding trust in God and what we are doing and what God is doing in us and through us and how we are participating with God in what God is doing. So keep that in mind as we go through the scripture this morning. Most of us are probably familiar with the story of Mary, of how she was visited by an angel, surprise visit, and this angel said, blessed are you. You have been chosen by God because of who you are to bear the Messiah. Now, remember, Mary is probably mid-teens, She's a virgin. She's a nobody. And God chose her. Because you, Mary, will bear the Son of God. You, Mary, have been chosen to bring the Messiah into the world. And the only question Mary asked was, how will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will bear the child. Then remember what Mary's response was. May it be to me as you have said. Acceptance. 
She chose to participate in what God was doing, in what God's plan was. Now, I am, I am positive. I'll, I'll just say I'm 100% positive. There were thoughts going on in her head. How is this going to happen? What is this going to mean? How am I going to get through this? What is Joseph going to think? How is this going to look to my family and my community? What is this going to be like? Yet she had joy. She went to stay with Elizabeth for three months. Went to visit her relative for three months. And as she walked in the house and greeted Elizabeth, the sound of Mary's voice caused the baby in Elizabeth's womb to leap for joy. Now remember, Elizabeth was carrying Jesus' cousin, John the, to be John the Baptist, the one who would make straight the paths for the Messiah. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, there was joy in her womb, there was joy within Elizabeth herself, about how honored she was that the, the, the mother of our Lord would come and visit her. There was joy, not because of the, necessarily the circumstance, because Mary and Elizabeth knew that there were hard times ahead, knew this wasn't going to be an easy journey. Yet there was joy. There was joy that God had chosen them to participate in what God was doing in the world to bring about Jesus' birth. I just find that fascinating. Not that God chose people, but that, that acceptance. So often today, you and I question what God is doing in our world. So often today, God, we question what God is doing with us. Why, God, are you doing this? Why, God, did you let that happen? Why, God, is all this going on in my life? And those questions aren't wrong. Those questions aren't wrong because it's okay to ask those questions about why. Mary asked that question. How, Jess, how is this going to happen? But sometimes I think that you and I, in our world today, we don't take that next step and trust that God is working in us and through us regardless of our situation, regardless of what's going on around us. Maybe we don't think God's going to work through us because we're just, just a nobody. Maybe we think God's not going to work through us because of our background of our past life. I'm too young. I'm too old. I don't have enough training. I, don't, I can't do this. I, I'm not capable of that. Yet what God says to us through this story of Mary and Elizabeth is that God chooses us. And I believe God has chosen each one of us, even today, to participate and be a part of the plan that God is, is working in the world today. And that should bring us joy. We may not be happy about something, about a circumstance, but we can be joyous and have joy, a deep abiding joy that comes because, number one, we have faith that God is working. We know God is working in our lives to transform us, to change us, to do the things that we need to do. We can also remember that God has worked in our past and in our history. We remember those things. Mary, as she talks about and sings about these things, 
She's remembering the way in which God touched the lives of, of her ancestors. The way that God was present with them, protected them, took care of them in the wilderness and throughout their history. And she rejoiced in that because she remembered God's presence. And in doing so, she was reminded that God is present with her then, in that moment. And she could have joy. Again, joy is not an emotion that, that comes and goes. Joy is something that we develop because of our faith. You read Paul. Paul talks about Paul talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And one of those fruit of the Spirit is joy. A joy that is developed because of what the Holy Spirit does in you and I. That joy that, that is birthed and grows because of our faith. Because of our trust and our obedience to what God has called us to. And how important that is for you and I to follow through with those things. How important that is for you and I to be present with God and to work as we bring, as we work toward the kingdom of God here on earth. So how do you and I develop joy? Or better yet, how do, we, how do you and I allow the Spirit to develop joy within us as part of that fruit of the Spirit? How are we going to be like Mary and Elizabeth as we trust in what God is doing in our lives and in the world and using us as part of that plan. First of all, we have to remember. We remember how God has been present with us in our past. Just like Mary did. We remember God's presence, God's actions, God's uh, working in our past. It could be our family. Remembering how God took care of our families at different times in special and specific ways. Or maybe how God has been present here in our church in present in specific ways. Maybe it's how God has used somebody in your life to touch you in a special way. We remember how God has taken care of us in the past in ways that may have been out of the ordinary may have been specific and special. So think about that for a moment. How, what do you remember when you think about how God has provided for you, your family, your church, taken care of you, provided for you, done these things for you, just as Mary did? What comes to mind? We also have to recognize God's presence with us in the here and now, in the present. Oftentimes, I think we don't recognize God's presence and God's action here today in our midst. We get so distracted, so focused on things of this world. We get so focused on the different events that we have to go to, the different things that come up, the different actions and activities and requirements and deadlines and on and on. That it's important that we stop and we recognize God's presence with us here and now. And that's an intentional act that we do. It's an intentional thing in which we say, okay, I'm gonna, I've got to stop. I need to be quiet. I need to pray. I need to think. I need to reflect on what God is doing today. Where is God present today? How is God speaking to me today? Oftentimes, God does not speak by angels. I've, I've never been spoken to by an angel. They'd be nice sometimes. I mean, that would get a message to me really clearly. 
But God often speaks in that quiet, still, small voice that we have to be very intentional about listening to and saying, okay, God, what is it that you have for me? And we hear God's voice through prayer. We hear God's voice through uh, scripture reading, through worship together and study together. But we also have to recognize God's presence with us as we move into the future. We have to trust and have faith that God is present with us as we move into the future. We don't know what the future holds, but we have to believe, we have to act, and we have to trust that God is already there. Someone once said, I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. And we have to trust in that. We have to trust that God is working and active and present in the future as we move forward. And in doing so, we can have that deep, abiding joy that develops and grows within us that the Holy Spirit plants and causes to grow. That fruit of the Spirit that, that comes up in the midst of some of the most trying circumstances we can still have joy in our lives. And people will look at us and say, why are you so joyous? And that doesn't mean we're happy necessarily. We can be sad and grieving and struggling and still have joy. Because remember, happiness and joy are, are different things. Joy comes from that deep, abiding faith and trust in God. Happiness comes from just something we enjoy doing, a circumstance, a relationship, a party, an event. It's here today and now tomorrow. Mary and Elizabeth knew that joy, experienced that joy. As they prepared for the birth of their sons, they knew God was present in that midst. They knew God was working in them. And they were part, directly a part, of God's plan to bring Jesus into the world. See, you and I, even here today, at the end of 2022, we are called to bring Jesus into the world as well. We may not be like Mary, but we're called to take Jesus from this place into the world through our actions and our words. We're called to bring Jesus into the workplace. We're called to bring Jesus into the schools, into our homes, into the stores, to the restaurants, wherever we may go. We are called to bring Jesus into those places through our actions and our words and our very presence. Two weeks ago, we talked about Jesus, the birth of Jesus brings us hope for a better future. A future that's grounded in our faith in God. Last week we talked about Jesus, the birth of Jesus bringing peace. The Prince of Peace is born and brings peace into the world in a way that goes beyond understanding. We can be in a chaotic situation and we can still be peaceful because we know God is in control. God is present with us. And we can be in that same type of situation, that same type of, of circumstance. And we can say, I can have joy in this. Not because I'm happy, but because God is present. Not because I'm excited about what's going on. But because God is present. God is working. And God is using me. God is, is working in this world, and I'm a part of it. And that brings us joy. That brings us hope. And that brings us peace for our world around us. So as we go about our world today, as we go into our world from this place this morning, I encourage you. I encourage you to, to work to develop that. That joy, 
allow the Spirit to, to encourage that joy, to bring about that joy. Enjoy what God is doing with you and in you. Rejoice because God is present in your lives and God is present in our community. Be joyful because God has sent Jesus to be born to us in a humble circumstances in ways that we can't even imagine. That birth changes the world. Would you pray with me this morning? Gracious God, we come this morning knowing that you are present with us, knowing that in all things we just come to worship you. Lord, we live in a world that, that focuses on being happy. On filling our lives with happy things and happy thoughts. But Lord, instill within us, grow within us, that joy, that deep abiding joy that comes from you. A joy that is brought by Christ born in a manger. A joy that is, is, is grown by the Holy Spirit and by our obedience to you, our recognition of you in all that we do. Lord, grow within us joy this Advent season. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. this morning for communion. We're going to sing the song, What Child Is This? And I, this has got to be one of my favorite Christmas carols. Just because I can imagine Mary and Joseph looking at this newborn baby, knowing what they've heard from the angels, knowing what they've experienced, and still asking the, this question, what child is this? What is this child going to let us sing that this morning as we prepare our hearts for communion together.
keys in your pocket? Oh, they're wonderful. Most of them. Mine reacted to something on the screen and gave out a shout. I had to go to the back and get help. Anyway, there's a wonderful <coughs> app on here, which is called a GPS. If you want to go somewhere, maybe you're running over to Salem. And you heard about a store that had a certain item you wanted. You put it in, hit the button, and it gives you directions. Turn left at the next signal, you know, and you get all the way there. Wonderful thing, but it isn't perfect. If you are coming to my house and you put in my address, you will be sent up Fur Grove Road. I live on the Kings Valley Highway, so all you have to do is follow the street here, go 12 miles, and you're at my driveway. It's the first driveway after Fur Grove Road. But because we bought the acre at the foot of our hill, which adjoins Fur Grove Road, GPS thinks that's how you get to my house. It doesn't, it's not perfect, right? There have been repairmen, people with Amazon, uh, UPS, have used their GPS and gone up for a road, way up to the top and lost. But there's something else you can use. It's even better than a GPS. You have one of those in your pocket? <laughs> and good news. You can use your phone to look up Bible verses. I tried it yesterday. You put in Bible verse. Maybe you're a little bit afraid. You put in fear. Up pops a verse. Perfect love casts out fear. You feel kind of upset. You put in peace. And it says, peace that passes understanding. So there's some, the, the cell phones are terrific. But this is really terrific, and this doesn't make mistakes. Okay, I was looking up uh, the scripture for our communion today, and if you want to turn to Matthew in your New Testament, Matthew, I have to put on my glasses. Matthew 26, 26. This is talking about the Last Supper. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. And it was given for us. Did you pick up one of these in the back of the church? If you didn't, um, you could raise your hand and John could give you one. So let's go ahead and... Um, Open this up and take the bread, which represents Christ's body given for us. This is, represents the body of Christ given for you. And in the same manner, he took the cup. And so now we can take the juice. And he said, this is my blood shed for you. Each time I take communion, I want to reconnect and um, recommit my life to Christ. My life, my heart, my thoughts, my everything, commit it once again to the Lord. And I'm asking him to fill me today with his powerful spirit. Shall we pray? As we leave this place, Lord, fill us with your spirit. Give us peace. Take away our fears. Help us to serve you any way we can. We love you, and thank you for giving us this communion opportunity to confess our sins and to be forgiven through your blood on the cross. Amen.
Thank you, Audrey. Appreciate those words. It's true. The, the GPS is not perfect, is it? But the Bible leads us in good places. As we prepare for our closing song of benediction this morning, some announcements. Our offering box is at the back there underneath the mirror as you leave this morning, or you can give online if you go to our website at dallasfirstcc.com. There's a link there, a little button there to, you can press, and it'll take you right to the, the giving process. It's, it takes just a couple minutes to set that up. And we encourage you to give as part of your worship uh, this morning. It's important that we give to support the work of the church and the ministries that we do here at Dallas First Christian Church. And we encourage you to do that as best you, as best you can. Uh, other announcements this morning, our men's Bible study continues to meet at 8.30 on Thursday mornings, and our Zoom Bible study, or prayer time, uh, is on Wednesday and Friday. The CWF, the Christian Women's Fellowship, will meet this Wednesday at noon for their Christmas uh, potluck celebration party, and all women are invited to join them. Uh, it's downstairs in our small dining room. Uh, if you have any questions about that, uh, Marcia, do you have, you can answer those Probably. Okay, so, so there's a white elephant gift exchange, a $5 limit on those. Uh, we encourage you. It's always fun. And the, the women always have a good time down there uh, when they gather. So all women are invited to join them for that. Okay. Uh, our Advent devotional is in the back. Uh, you can pick that up. And our prayer, new prayer brochure is back there as well. For their, uh, that, and our Advent devotional is A Walk in the Light. Uh, yeah, the Christmas Spectacular, as we mentioned at prayer time, is next weekend, a Friday night performance, and then one at 4 and 7 on Saturday. Marsha's got tickets for, for any of those shows that are still available. If you'd like to go and, and see the community, not just see, hear the community choir. Uh, sing, and there's a, a small orchestra there as well, so we encourage uh, you to participate in that. It's, it's a good time, and they do a great job with that. Uh, Christmas adopt a family all, all the sheets have been taken, and the gifts are due back by next Sunday, uh, unwrapped, and there's some tape up by the board if you need to put a name or, or some information on that and stick it to the, the gifts. Uh, if you have any questions, again, talk to Marcia about that. She can answer those questions as well. Today is Fill the Cart Sunday, and we had a good start with Fill the Cart, and we've gotten a lot of good stuff for this week uh, today. So we encourage you, if you weren't able to bring it and would like to bring it early or throughout the week, I'll probably take it Thursday morning or Friday morning. So you can bring, still bring those as well to uh, give to the Dallas Food Bank to help those who are food scarce uh, this holiday season. <laughs> of Advent, the time of waiting for the Christ child, has come. Each of our regional church congregations celebrates these weeks in their own unique ways. In the Christian Church in Oregon and Southwest Idaho, 45 Disciples of Christ congregations worship in Spanish, Chuquese, and English. In congregations of 10 to 500, we gather in rented spaces, homes, and buildings owned by congregations. We worship and serve in many different communities called to a variety of ministries near and far. Together, we form a regional church doing ministry in Oregon and Idaho and in partnership with disciples in Canada and the United States with partnerships around the world. Joy to the World invites us to repeat the sounding joy about the coming of Jesus into the world. It says, let every heart prepare him room. As we prepare room for the coming of Jesus, we repeat the joy of where we have seen Christ among us during 2022. Repeat the joy of gathering as a regional assembly in Salem in May after four years without meeting in person. Our regional assembly was a hybrid with over 170 people in person and another 50 or more online. The joy of our regional ministers visiting us in person in worship after a season of reduced travel. The joy of celebrating ordinations together. 
the joy of women gathering in person in Idaho and Oregon for retreats and online for three other gatherings. The joy of installing new pastors to ministries with congregations. The joy of our anti-racism team helping us to have meaningful conversations about our multiracial church. The joy of welcoming new congregations fully into fellowship during our regional assembly and a new Chiquiz ministry starting in Vancouver. Repeat the joy of gathering for conversations about stewardship with the Center for Faith and Giving. The joy of assisting congregations in times of counsel and need. The joy of knowing that our regional elders care for our retired pastors and the pastors involved in specialized ministries. With joy, our congregations bless their members, communities, and each other by sharing in ministry as a regional church together. Each year, the regional church receives a Christmas offering for our common ministry. We are grateful for the many who give to it each year. You can give to the Christmas offering for regional ministry through your congregation or by going to our website. Joy to the world, Christ is coming. A new year of ministry opens up before us. Join the chorus of disciples in Oregon and Idaho singing good news and joy to the world. Repeat the sounding joy. region collects a special offering to help ministries of the region. And you saw in that video uh, many of the different things that the region does uh, all throughout the year, from youth gatherings and uh, women and, and regional assemblies and all sorts of different things. The support that they, is given to the churches and ministers, all sorts of things that, that are, is, are done. Uh, and those offerings help. This special offering helps fund those things. There's information in your bulletin, and uh, you can give. Uh, there's an envelope, I believe, in there that you can put some money in, and it will go directly to the region. Uh, you saw how to give online at the website, uh, and you can give next week as well. And we'll talk a little bit more about this next week as well. But this is the Christmas offering, and we encourage you to give to support the ministry of the region uh, here in Oregon and Southwest Idaho. closing song this morning is Joy to the World. So would you stand if you're able to as we sing this, this wonderful hymn uh, Joy to the World.
Christ has been born. Christ will be born. Let us celebrate that with our lives, our words, and our actions. May you go in peace and hope and joy. Amen. Amen.